Okay, so what I'm looking at here is the 2018, so 2018, question C4 on the higher level paper. And I'm just looking at part B, okay? This is my second video looking at Archimedean spiral. So what the question looks like is this, okay? So in part A, we have to draw this Archimedean spiral doing one and a half revolutions. We'll draw this then for part B, we have to finish it. For part C, you have to develop the cone and show what is the true shape of the spiral between A and B. Now this drawing is quite a big drawing, so I've stuck down the page portrait, okay? That would be important. So I stuck down the page portrait. I'm going to keep my XY line more or less in the middle of my page. And then down in plan, I'm going to draw that diameter 180 or radius 90 circle. And I'm going to keep it over as far left as I can on my sheet. And just make sure that the circle doesn't cross your XY line. Okay, so that there is radius 90. I'm going to divide that circle just like in the last video. I'm going to divide that up on my 3060 up into 12 equal parts. So that's always the case for Archimedean spiral. You always divide the circle into 12 equal parts. Now, okay, so in the last video, it was just one revolution that the Archimedean spiral had to do. Just one revolution, okay? And what we did was, we had the line AB and we divided it up into 12 equal parts. So I know that one revolution equals 12 divisions, okay? But this time, I have one and a half revolutions. So doing some basic maths, that means 12 multiplied by 1.5 will be 18. So what that means is I have to divide the line between A and O into 12 equal parts, okay? So because it's radius 90, that means it's quite easy. I just can use five mil steps on my set square. There's no need for line division in this question. So I'm just going to divide it up into 18 5 mil steps. And again, the reason why is one revolution was 12 divisions, which we did in the last video. One and a half revolutions, it has to be 18, revolu 18 divisions. If it was two revolutions, it would be 12 multiplied by 2, which would be 24. And 3 would be 36. So now we just to make sure that we plot this the correct way. So zero, okay, or O, that will be zero. Then the first one, so I'm going in the same direction as the clock. If that's zero, then this has to be one, and two, and four, and five, all the way around. So zero is also 12, okay? One is also 13. 2 is also 14, this is 15, 16, 17, and then 18 is also the same as 6. So that means when I get my compass and I start swinging these points onto each line, I would swing the first one, which is very close to 1, so your compass probably won't be able to get to this small of a circle, but the very first one, I'm going to swing that from O on 2.1. The second one, I'm going to swing it onto line two. Then the third one, it goes onto line three. The fourth one goes to line four, five, six goes to line six, that's right there. Seven goes up a bit higher, seven, then eight, then nine, then 10, then 11, and then finally 12. 
So 12, now you see you've done one full revolution, okay? But we're going to keep going, 12, we're now going to 13, the 13th step that goes onto line 13. Then the 14th step that goes to 14. Then 15, that goes to 15. 16, goes to 16. 17, goes to 17. And A is the last one, it's 18. So just in case my hands or the compass was in the way, just got to explain that one more time. So if I was to label these dots starting at zero, so I call the first one there one, and then two, three, four, five, six, and so on. I swung one onto line one. I swung two to line two, three to line three, four to line four, five onto line five. Most common mistake is here at six. Six stays on the line that you divided. Six is on six. Then I swing seven to seven and eight to eight and so on. So some of the lines have more than one dot. So you see where there's two numbers, you actually have two dots on the line. And then if you just look at your diagram, you'll see it's the exact same. And we freehand join this up then, our Archimedean spiral. And that will answer part A of the question. Now, we're now moving on to part B. So for part B, we have to draw the cone up in front elevation. So that's just an upside down triangle, okay? So it's an inverted nape of a cone. So I'm gonna draw that. So zero is the apex of the cone. That's there on the XY line, just brought it up. I'm gonna bring up A and zero, or A and 12 up here, with my Z square and T square. And we're told in the question that O is up 20 mil off the XY line. So I'm going to go up a little bit higher. I'm going to go up 20 mil off the XY to find where O is. And then I'm going up 135 mil from that then to find where two outside corners are. So you probably can't see this on the camera, so I'll move the board now in a second once I get it labeled. So it's gonna move down the board to show you, okay? So uh, from here to here is 20, and then from here all the way up to there then is 135, which I got directly from the question. And then that allows me to get my inverted nape of a cone in front elevation. Okay, next step. The lines going from O to one and O to two all the way around, all these pink lines as such in my plan, I'm going to try and find them now in front elevation. So basically, um, I bring them up. So you'll see that five and seven are on the same line. So when you bring that up then, this point up here, making sure to label, this is five and it's seven, okay? Oh, sorry, and there's another label, I forgot, it's also 17. So you have 17, five, and seven. So I'm bringing that up. The next one then will have 16, four, and eight when I bring it up. So 16, four, and eight. I then have nine, three, and 15. Nine, three and 15. I then have two, 14 and 10. So bringing that up. Two, 14 and 10. And I have one, 13 and 11. So bringing that up. So that one there is one, 13 and 11. The very outside corner is zero and 12. And this very outside corner here, just put the label underneath, that is 18 and six, okay? So just to make sure we're okay with that, I've brought them up from plan directly up to here. Whatever they're called in plan, I've called them the same in front elevation. Now, those pink lines that are my plan, I can find those pink lines in front elevation. So basically I join 
each dot at the top right down to O. Now, okay, so that's going to allow me to get a few dots in front elevation of the Archimedean spiral. Now the dots that we will not be able to get at the moment will be the dot on nine and the dot on three and 15, okay, down in plan. So I was going to zoom up the sheet again. So I'll just highlight the two dots that we can't get at the moment, but I will show you how. I won't be able to get this point here. I will not be able to get this point here. And I will not be able to get this third point down here. All because when I try and bring them up, they're all on the same line. That's the reason why I can't get them. However, everything else is easy to get. So I'm just going to label the dots and then before I bring them up. So I'm going to call this one here, the very first one I'll call it A. Then we have B, C, we'll call that one I, and then J, K. L, M, N, O, P, Q, and R. So I'm going to bring each one of them, one at a time, up into front elevation and find them on the pink lines in front elevation. So, for example, uh, I won't talk about every single one of these in the video, so I'll talk about a couple of them. So, for example, if I want to get J, J is on the line 0, 10. So I bring up J. Where it crosses the line 0, 10, that has to be where J is. K, it's on the line 0, 11. So when I bring that up, that's where K is. L is on the line 0, 12. So I bring up L. It's on the very outside. That's where L is. Okay, and... It's the very same thing. So we're just going to get all of these letters up in front elevation. I'm not going to join it into anything yet because we need to discuss that in the video. So I'm just bringing them all up one at a time. And again, remember, I will not be able to get at the moment I, C and O. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that in a couple of minutes. But for everything else, you should have no problem. Okay, so I've got a lot of the dots now in front of elevation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get I, C, and O. 
I'm just going to do it for one of them, okay? So that you'll know yourself then for the rest what to do. And what we're actually going to do is a horizontal cutting plane. So I'm going to get my compass, okay? And I'm just going to get the letter I for this video. So I'm going to put the point of my compass at O. I'm going to put the pencil at I. And I'm going to draw a circle right around. Now that circle crosses over the widest lines of the cone at these two points here, okay? So two points right here. And I'm gonna find them two points in front elevation and join them. So I'm bringing up the widest points and I'm gonna join them. And what you'll see happening is a perfect horizontal cutting line. Because what you've done is a horizontal cutting plane backwards. If I cut the cone horizontally, I will get circles, okay? Which I'll highlight now with a colouring pencil so you can see it. So I'm getting this yellow circle. So I put the point of my compass at the center. I put the pencil at I and I drew that full circle all the way around, okay? That yellow circle in front elevation is this yellow line. And how I'm getting that is I bring the widest points, so east and west, straight up, where they hit the outside of the cone, I join them across. And that will be a perfectly horizontal cut line. And where that crosses over the line 09315, the one that we couldn't get, that will find for you exactly where the latter I is. And I will have to repeat the process for C and for O down further. So I have to repeat it for this C here on my labeling and this O down here. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a smaller circle for C and a bigger circle for point letter O. Now, okay, so I'm just getting point O now, the last letter to get. And then it's just down to joining this up then in front elevation freehand, but it's just knowing which one is heavy and which one will be dotted because of hidden detail. What can you see and what can you not see? Now, before I go any further, you have to make sure you're okay with every single step so far. So I would pause and rewind a couple of times in the video, make sure you're okay will especially getting each letter up there. And remember, as an examiner, I will be looking out for how did you get I, how did you get C, and how did you get O. So basically, I'll be looking, did you use horizontal cutting planes in reverse to find those points? Now, when it comes to joining this up, you just need to know, so if you're down here looking in, okay? So if you're here, and you're looking in at the object, what letters can you see? I can see R, Q, P, O, N, M, and L. So that's all heavy then in my front elevation. I join freehand all of those letters in front elevation. Oh, I'm going a bit off there. Heavy, down as far as L. You cannot see L, K, J, I, G, F, all them ones there, they're at the back. So from now on, I'm going to go dotted through them as far as F. And then you can see F, E, C, D, B, and A. So that's all going to be heavy here then for the end. Finishing right out. I'm making sure the last point then goes right down to O. So your answer will be something like that. Okay? And that's what they're looking for. So remember, you can see this line. You cannot see this line, which is why I've drawn and dotted. 
and you can see from F to A. And that's why it's drawn in solid as well. Right, so that's part A and part B done. Now we're moving on to doing part C. How do I develop this cone? So we've been asked just to develop between A and B, which basically means develop the cone, one quarter of the cone between A and B. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to do that to one side here. So the way you develop a cone is as follows, okay? The first thing you do is you start off with a vertical line or a horizontal line, but I always start off vertical, anywhere that you like, okay? And onto that line, I'm going to put the full length of the side of the cone from front elevation. So I'm getting the full length. So basically I'm getting the length with say from 12 right down to O on my compass. It's quite a big radius, put the hand touch. Coming over here to that line, just taking the top of it, putting that on, and I'm swinging a nice big arc with that heading on out, okay? Now I'm gonna have to go get another little bit of paper just to add on here because I'm not gonna have enough space there. Adding on a bit more space here. Going to be drawn on the drawing board. In the exam, you'll have A2 sheets anyway, and something like this would fit comfortably on an A2 sheet. Now, so again, that length there, I've got my compass. I'm putting it here onto this random vertical line wherever I like, and I'm drawing a nice big arc, hitting on out like so. Now, how do you work out how long that arc is? Well, you get your compass again, and you can take any distance you like in plan between any two segments. So that means basically I can take the distance between nine and 10 there, or I could take it between 10 and 11. They're all the same, any two, any segment. And I'm going to mark that off one, two, three times, because we have to do this much of the cone in plan. So I just have to go one, two, three spaces. One, two, three, and I'm going to join the last one back up to here. Now that has developed one quarter of the cone, okay? And that's what we had to do first. So I'm just drawing in the arc at the bottom in the full color if I can. Okay, and I'm going to join each of them lines now, these points here, back to that corner. There's one, there's two. I'm going to label it now. This up here is O, which in plan was that O at the very start, okay? This line here now is O to three which is also O to 15, but O to three is all we need. I'm then going to go from O to four, O to five, O to six, okay? So the next step now is I have to get the true length of a couple of lines, okay? The first one I have to get the true length of is I have to get the true length from O to this point here, which is also O. I have to get the true length of O to P, O to Q, and I have O to R, because O to R, R finishes at the exact same place as six. So we're going to be using auxiliary views, and we're going to have to get a couple of true distances. So the first one I'm going to get is O to O. So using my set squares, I set myself up. I go perpendicular to that line. Anywhere I like, so you'll be drawn on top of your drawing, which is normal. I set up an XY line, okay? So I'm gonna make this a bit longer. I'm gonna call this X1, Y1. And I'm gonna get the height of O in my front elevation, which we know is 20 mil from the very start of the question. So I get the height of O 
at the bottom, which is 20 mil. I mark that off. So there's O at the bottom. And then I'm going to get the height of the other O from my front elevation with my compass, which is this height. So I'm just taking that height there with my compass. Show it now on the camera. So I'm getting the height from the XY up to O. Make sure you're going from the XY up to O, the top one. And I mark that from this XY up to O. And that finds for me a true length. I'm going to call that TL1. And true length 1, I'm going to get that on my compass as well. And I'm going to put that onto my development on the line O going to 3. And there it is there. And I'm going to highlight that that is TL1. I have to repeat the process now for P. So another XY line. So there's a good bit of drawing in this still. So I'm going 90 degrees to this line here. And then again, I get an auxiliary view of it. So I'm bringing out O, I'm bringing out P. Anywhere I like, I set up an XY line. It can be on top of the drawing because you're going to have to work on what you're given. Again, I get the height of O, which is 20 mil. My compass. And I get the height of P and the height of O, putting that on here. Getting the height of P now with my compass from my XY line up. So I got that there. I'm gonna put that down here. Now that's gonna go off my page. So I might actually put the XY line going the opposite way. So that will be where P is. So we have P up here. So there's a good bit in this to get to the very end. And unfortunately, there isn't a shorter way of doing it. Uh, some students I've seen use auxiliary views. Uh, I've used horizontal cutting planes to solve this, but it gets too messy. As messy as this is, it gets a lot messier, that. So that's true length two. I'm going to get that in my compass. And I'm going to put that onto line four. That's P. And you keep repeating the process. You have one more to do now. Or the line 05. I'm just conscious of the video getting long and I want to make sure that I have enough space. So you would get one more. So you would get the true length from O to Q. And when you have that done then, you would join them up freehand and then that would show the true curvature of the line between A and B in the question. So that basically would answer part three. So as a recap on that then, I developed the cone. Okay, if you go back to the video, you see how I developed the cone. I then got the true length of the line OO, OP, and OQ. To get a true length, you look perpendicular to the line. So if I take, for example, O to O again, and I'll draw in a different color so it stands out for the video, so you can see. So I'm going perpendicular to the line OO. Flip my set square. I went out here. I went out with O as well. I drew an XY line wherever I wanted, once it was 90 degrees across. I measured up 20, or where I got that from was, I took this height here for O, I put that height there for O. I then took this height here for the other letter O. I put that height here for the other letter O. And I joined them together to get my first true length which is what I put on to my development. And I repeat that process for the other two lines. Okay, hope that helps. Try and get them two Archimedean spirals questions answered. If you're finding this part difficult, it's okay, I can do that in a live class. But see, can you do the main part of getting this, this, and the first video done as well. Thanks very much.